good evening to all the viewers who are watching live and will be watching on a recorded version uh so we have a interesting topic today for all the alumni alumnus and all the future uh, homeopaths who will be uh, studying about i mean thinking about the scopes in uh, bhms and other topics about degenerative disease so let's just not waste our time and go to the countdown time of 30 seconds Good evening, everybody. And seventy-five episodes gone. Tonight we are good evening, everybody. Tonight we are on the seventy-sixth episode of our online CME, and by the grace of God, uh, inspired by the ministry of Ayush, the Deden Minister of Ayush. Three years ago, and with active cooperation from NIH authorities, the various director, director in charge, uh, and the present director sirs, we had been able to complete seventy-five episodes, and tonight we are having the seventy-sixth. We are having very important guests tonight, and I'm proud to uh, share the screen with all these eminent guests. who are the eminent homeopaths across the globe to inaugurate tonight's session uh, i'll request professor dr chintamani naik sir who is the academic in charge of ug a national school of homeopathy a very learned person and to inaugurate tonight's session yes, sir uh, professor uh, naik thank you thank you uh, all for joining today this momentous occasion it is my pride and enthusiasm that uh, we are i am going to inaugurate the uh, uh, session we, uh, and today the session will be uh, addressed towards the degenerative uh, disorders of the joint disease and the uh, scopes uh, in the field of uh we uh, are after uh, completing the uh, bhms course what are the uh, opportunities that are being uh, uh, it is to be shared by uh, dr suman and uh, pre presently i welcome uh, professor dr mp arya uh, who is the most eminent person uh, actually he is known as the father of homeopathy at the present time and from the beginning uh, and he is a most knowledgeous person and uh, here at present uh, dr uh, dn kalland uh, uh, he is the most knowledgeous person uh, uh, he is able to uh, uh, serve the uh, national institute of homeopathy and He has collected all the uh, memories uh, in relation to the uh, digital subjoints uh, uh, in his uh, tenure, and he will be sharing. And today is the last part which he is going to share. And also, I welcome Dr. Suman, uh, who is my student, and he has completed uh, the. management also from this and he is a very knowledgeable and he has been exposed to public health and he will be also sharing the opportunities uh, in the field of homeopathy uh, that is going to be and uh, i also uh, thank to uh, our uh, uh, dr bidut mukherjee sir uh, for being a continuous uh, involved in this uh, seminar uh, and the, today the 76 uh, session that is going to be uh, and uh, the alumni it is it will be the most uh, 
they will be feeling very much uh, welcomed uh, over this uh, the, uh, covering the 76 session and now without delaying any i will be uh, asking dr bidu uh, sir to take over the session. and Thank you so much, sir. And we are proud to have you with us. And also, as you had uh, introduced our beloved, respected Dr. M.P. Arya, sir. It's over to you, sir. Uh, we missed uh, Dr. Arya's presence uh, in our 75th episode due to technical snag. But tonight, Alumni Association and all the NIH uh, lovers are happy to host Dr. M.P. Arya uh, to have us uh, as our moderator. Over to you, sir. Dear friends and colleagues, and all alumni of our prestigious National Institute of Homeopathy, Kolkata, very good evening to you all. You are welcome to this 76th online CME program hosted very nicely by the uh, NIH Alumni Association uh, organizers. Today, we have two well-known resource personalities to tell us on two very important topics. Professor Dr. Dev Narayan Kalyani, the Honorary President of NIH Alumni Association, who will share with us his experiences in dealing with a large case study series of osteoarthritis, also called osteo, uh, also called degenerative uh, joint disease, followed equally by very interesting topic of scope and uh, opportunities for BHMS graduates in India and abroad by Dr. Suman K. Viswas the former direct district medical officer of West Bengal. Professor Dr. Chintamani Nayak of Department of Homeopathic Material Medica NIH has already very graciously inaugurated today's, well, today's uh, webinar. So relax and sit down in the comfort of your home and enjoy both our speakers today. But before I hand over the proceeding to Dr. Kalyani, let me acknowledge my thanks to the President, Dr. Professor Dr. Kalyani, the President of NIH Alumni Association, and Dr. Vidyut Mukherjee, the Honorary Secretary of NIH Alumni Association, for asking me, this old man, to moderate this important session. And I trust and I must say that I'm honored and by them. Now, returning back to our topic, uh, of uh, today, we will keenly listen to both our resource speakers after one another. Afterward, the organizers will invite questions, if any, from the participant directed to respective speakers, and we shall request them uh, to uh, have their answers. And if time permits, I shall wind up uh, with few words while thanking both of uh, our speakers. With this all time being, I shall hand over the proceeding uh, to Dr. Kalyani for taking over from here. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm... Sir, very Dr. sorry. Kalyani. I'm facing some network problem. Uh, can the second speaker yeah. be brought first? Okay, okay. Okay, sir. yeah. Uh, sir, I'm very Dr. sorry. Dr. I'm Vishwas facing some network problem. Can the second speaker okay, okay. speaker be brought first, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we request Doctor uh, Doctor Suman Vishwas for Doctor Vishwas. Are you ready? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, doctor. Yeah, please, please, Doctor. Let's we 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 change. We will re invite Doctor Vishwas uh, for uh, uh, very important uh, topic: the uh, opportunities and the scope for BHMS after graduation. 
Kamal Vishwar. Thank you. Yes, sir. So thank you. Uh, okay. So uh, first of all, let me thank all of you who are present uh, present in this platform. This is the 76 CME session organized by NIS Alumni Association. And uh, I would uh, like to thank first today's inaugurator, our uh, Professor Dr. Chintamuni Naik, sir. He was my teacher during my BASMS uh, uh, days in NIS, Kolkata. And I also heard about Professor Dr. M. P. Arya, sir, but I, this is the first time I am meeting him you know, through online. So I, have, I, I, I am very much happy to meet him, sir, in this platform. And my, uh, also my sincere thank to Dr. Dev Narayan Kalyani, sir, and Dr. Bidhud Mukherjee, sir. Also, I would like to thank uh, our IT person uh, 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 to, uh, give, to give us this opportunity in this, uh, to, and helping us this online, uh, say, to broadcast this, uh, this online session. So uh, today's actually, uh, And I, I think most of the student uh, who is uh, passing, passing out uh, after just uh, after graduating, they have some career issues. What do we do next? So I choose this topic, and it will be helpful for the recently passed out graduate, uh, graduates, even who are in the final year, even the uh, 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 still who are pursuing the courses. So I'd like to um, elaborate on that topic. So my today's topic is opportunities and scopes after completing BASMS in India as well as abroad. Shall I uh, share a screen? I'm sorry, should I guide you, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Uh, uh, are you using laptop, right? Yes, yes. Uh, can, you can see the present option, uh, present, yes. right beside the audio. Uh, click hmm. on that and click on slides. Okay. Then your computer uploads file. Uh, keynote file are not supported. Uh, what? What, sir? Uh, keynote files are not supported. Please export it to uh, PDF. Then, sir, it will be best if you present the screen, sir. Okay. So, shall I... Uh... Uh, clear, click on the present, then click on uh, share screen. Okay. Again, click on the present button, then click on share screen. Yeah, let like me that. open that uh, PDF, uh, that uh, uh, presentation part. So, mm -hmm. yes, okay. Present, then share screen. Yes, sir. Screen. Then Chrome tab window and entire screen. Entire screen. Entire screen. Yes, sir. Okay. Share. Um, so then click on share, sir. After clicking on entire screen, then click on share. Yeah, I, I did that, but it's not coming. Uh, click on the screen which you are seeing. Means, and after clicking entire screen, there will be a small part where you will be seeing an entire screen portion. Means a short form version of your screen, sir. Just click on that. Share the screen. Yeah, on, then share is there. Chrome has ah, just click on share. share. You can capture your screen. Uh, the so share is, is not opening, right? Sir? No. No. Uh, so then uh, you are just seeing a miniature version of your screen, sir. Can you see that uh, on a white space after clicking on entire screen? Uh, Chrome has lost permission to capture your screen. It's fine. Lost permission? Sir, lost permission means? Uh, uh, it's 
showing that then maybe so there is some problem with your uh, permission button can you just go to the permission button uh, that's above the uh, means link address part there will be a log button just click on that and you will be seeing something permissions Uh, did you get it, sir? No. Otherwise, better I if I can share with you, then you can share on that. That would work. Uh, so. Basically, sir, I am not using a laptop. Uh, so okay. I am using via my phone. And from phone, there will be some difficulties. It means there are no options to share from phone. Okay. Uh, so that is the main problem. Yeah. Um, but, sir, you can just uh, give me the PPT. I can just upload it later if. If possible, via Google Drive. Okay. For the people to available. Yeah. It's okay. It can be best too, sir. Yeah. So uh, I'm just creating PDF. One one thing they are saying is uh, share PDF. So I'm uh, converting it into PDF. Then I will share. I will try again. Ah. Yeah, sir. It will be best also, sir. Um, the process may take time, sir. Until then, uh, uh viewers, please hold on. Uh, just sit back, relax. It will take some time. So take your time, sir. Uh, no issues. Okay. Um, sir, uh, is it going on, sir? Yeah, it's uh, uploading. It's uh, showing uploading here. Another port. I mean, on the StreamYard, it is showing uploading, or just on the converter? No, it's uh, in the back still, maybe. Wherever I am showing, my face is showing on that. Another. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's uh, showing uploading, right? Yeah. Ah, best, sir. It will be best, sir. And let's just wait then. Let's see. Yeah, no, it's processing time will... mm -hmm. yes sir. yeah it's uh, uploaded maybe just check on yes sir it's uploaded uh, let me just uh, take it up on screen okay um here it is sir over to you now sir you can just start okay So just let me check. I can change the slides. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. You can just now start. Yeah. Over to yes. you, sir. Yeah. OK. So thank you for helping me. And uh, now uh, today's uh, presentation is about opportunities and higher education in India after BASMS. So this question, actually, I had for myself what I shall do after completing my BASMS. And I was passed out from NIS in 2017. Later, I chose to pursue my higher studies in public health. And I did MPA's uh, Master's of Public Health in Epidemiology from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. 
and that was a very kind of different perspective in my uh, medical studies and that helped me to grow and help my knowledge homeopathic medical knowledge into the public health field later i worked as an uh, district health officer it saved the children international and only if we uh, uh, in india actually there are so many uh, scopes for bhms graduate we can if we choose to go for clinical field the bhms is sufficient and for we can go for md or higher studies in homeopathy but if we choose to go in different fields we may choose different subject and we are allowed to study different topic different subject as we are medical graduate so for me as i am from bangladesh i had uh, very limited opportunities uh, to uh, 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 to get uh, to work in homeopathic field so i choose to prefer public health and later i work as a district health officer and uh, after that i have completed uh, md homeopathy from jsps government homeopathic medical college hyderabad so i will be, uh, be talking on that topic so in this session actually i have three more ob three objectives first objective i will be talking about few facts on homeopathy and job profile and salary and practice after completing bhms and what are the scope and opportunities we have for higher studies after completing bhms so these three main point i would be talking on this session so let me welcome you all who are now active in this session and who will be listening to offline later so let me talk about few fact sheet on homeopathy homeopathy is a holistic way of treatment so we all know what is holistic so in a single word it is called the person as a whole while we treat a person we treat the person as a whole we do not treat the person based on symptomatology and homeopathy is also called evidence based complementary medicine and this is uh, evidence based means which is which is having scientific background or scientific validity so homeopathy has gained this uh, evidence based and it is also called complementary medicine as in india homeopathy is homeopathy comes under ayush medicine but if we go to europe and other countries of um, of the world you may heard cam complementary alternative medicine so except allopathic medicine all other therapeutics who are being practiced in that area that is called cam previously even in uh, the south asian region homeopathy also comes under cam but once the ministry of ayush form in india it comes under ayush medicine and in india around 100 million indians so this is a huge number around 10 crores of indian this solely depends on homeopathy and this paper was published in lancet 2010 and you may all know lancet is the best medical journal and uh, so it's a huge number so many countries in the mass of population and in india 100 million indians 10 crores of indians they solely depends on homeopathy solely means they directly go for homeopathy they do not prefer any other system of medicine and homeopathy is growing faster than ayurveda and unani in india so this report i took uh, uh, from the question answering session in the parliament session our minister uh, spoke on that so these are the uh, uh, reference i took from that and it also mentioned that annual average outdoor patient attendance was higher in homeopathy in comparison to ayurveda unani and siddha and that report was published by icmr annual average outdoor patient attendance so these are the out patient uh, uh, was more higher in homeopathic hospital and homeopathic clinic compared to ayurveda unani and siddha so every year actually all homeopathy uh, all the ayush hospital they need to send their uh, hospital statistics to icmr and icmr they publish that and in india we have around 2.50 lakhs qualified homeopaths so this is this uh, data is 2020 data so the, the number has may has increased to up to 3 uh, up to 3 lakhs qualified homeopaths in india and now india's population is uh, around 1.45 crores and india is the now number one populated country so if we compare the homeopath if we uh, uh, make the ratio per population so in india we have got one homeopathic doctor for 2100 population 2100 uh, homeopathic doctor for one crore of population and uh, as per who the standard 
do uh, doctor and population ratio is one is to one doctor for one thousand population. So there is uh, for us it's a huge scope because less number of doctor. So for one crore of population, our homeopathy is two thousand one hundred, and this is the much lower than other system of medicine. So India need more homeopaths. And previously, no health insurance companies they were providing coverages for homeopathic treatment. But uh, after the ministry formed, fifteen health insurance companies they are providing full coverage to homeopathic treatment. Who is going for? Who is coming for homeopathic treatment? They are all. Uh, uh, they can claim for financial uh, issues for their treatment purpose. So, uh, so fifteen health insurance companies they are providing fully health. Covers, and all over the world, 500 million people are using homeopathy, and that report was long back 2006. So uh, it's a huge number of population, 500 million people using homeopathy worldwide. So if we look uh, global scenario, homeopathy is the second largest therapeutic system globally, but third largest system in India. So worldwide homeopathy is the second largest therapeutic system, but in India it's the third after Ayurveda. Allopathy is the first, second is Ayurveda, and homeopathy is third in Indian scenario. But in global scenario, after allopathy, homeopathy is the second, and homeopathy is practiced in more than hundred countries. And this report was uh, published by uh, uh, Science of Gentle Healing book by CCRI. So uh, more than hundred countries, their homeopaths are being practiced. If you look around the UG colleges, PG colleges, and dispensaries, even the government uh, Ayush Hospital, we have uh, two two forty seven UG colleges. So we have only two degrees in homeopathy. One is uh, BASMS and another is MD. We do not have any uh, other homeopathic degree now in India. So we have around two forty seven UG colleges and fifty nine. For India, we have around eight thousand of homeopathic dispensaries. And two zero seven government Ayush hospital. So uh, previously Ayush uh, system was being practiced in the as a wing of district level hospital, community level hospital, even the some PSCs. But uh, uh, as per national Ayush mission, the government has established two zero seven government Ayush hospital. So all streams of Ayush are being practiced in those those hospitals. So if we uh, uh, ch uh, check the different practitioners, uh, the qualified practitioners of different system. This is the comparison, and this actually all data is from 2020. So the number may increase nowadays. So if you look the practitioners, allopathic practitioner, we have around 10.5 labs, and Ayurveda 3.5, and homeopaths around 2.5 labs. So uh, the number of homeopaths are very less compared to other system of medicine. Even the hospitals, uh, this year of uh, this. Um, This, this is under the government setup. Actually, this hospital and dispensaries in the government setup. So they have around twelve thousand allopaths. Allopathic hospital. They have around twelve thousand hospitals and dispensaries. About one point seven seventy lakhs, one point seven lakhs. And um, uh, Ayurveda also have around twenty five hundred hospital and fifteen thousand dispensaries. But in homeopath, we have only. Two hundred sixteen hospital and seven thousand dispensaries. So for us, the number of Hospital practitioners and dispensaries are very less, so we have a great opportunity. If we uh, go for this private practice, even the, uh, as a medical officer, if we do the clinical job, then let me talk why BSMS is best for private practice or job. Because we have more opportunity, and every year in India we have around nineteen hundred a new admission for BSMS, and for MBBS it's around sixty thousand. And for BAMS, we have around thirty thousand. So, for number of admission is very less for us compared to other system of medicine in India. As number of admission are very less, so less number of uh, student they are graduating. So, for us, the more placement and more private practice since since less number of doctors. Then another again that question why then why BAMS is best for private practice or job. So if we compare other system of medicine, just I will uh, let me tell that point that allopathic practice of uh, allopathic system, they require at least PG degree for practicing. 
and uh, uh, more than 100 year uh, more than 10 years they require to earn bread and butter after completing their Uh, uh most of um uh, at least the, uh, they require 10 uh, years after completing their graduation to earn bread and butter because now even if you look into the general public in the in your area you may see who is having all holding all the mbbs degree they are having very less passion but who is having a specialization even so many people they lack uh, the specialized doctor for their treatment so for them, after completing graduation, the opportunity is very less. Even for Ayurveda, the cost of medicine is very high and there are so many abundant quack practitioners across India. So uh, people may get confused to whom they shall go. So the opportunity for them is also very less. And for dental, uh, this clinic uh, setup cost is very high and the primary patients are very less for dental clinic. But homeopath? We require only BSMS degree to start our clinic, and the uh, medicine, the cost of medicine, and the clinic setup is also very less. Private practice is best option than any other job that gives you more social reputation and financial maturity. So this is from my own perspective. So, this so uh, each and every person will have different different uh, ideologies on that. So for me, uh, it's actually uh, helped me to gain the social reputation and even the financial maturity is more good in my country perspective. So if we look around the job, we have around two sector of job. One is public and another is private sector. So pu pu uh, public sector, you all know, through one is through UPSC and another is from the State Service Commission. But I will not go on that. You you all know on that. and. I will be talking about few jobs on private sector and this is not well explored. So I will be talking on that field where we can go for private uh, jobs. So let me talk about the salaries in uh, private jobs and even in private private clinic from my own experience and perspective in my own uh, in my in Bangladesh context as well as Indian context. So private job after once you complete BASMS of MD, you may take a job in a corporate clinic or pharmacological company. In both of them, you can start somewhere around 30 to 60,000 per month, and it will increase with your experience. And that can reach up to 1.5 lakhs. So once you hold BSMS degree, you can directly join a few private jobs, and that will the initial salary that will be starting with 30. And 30 to 60, that depends on your skills and professionalism. And in government job, I will be not talking on that because uh, in a state different, uh, this uh, uh, um, central government has uh, the seventh pay commission uh, uh, salary scale and the state also have different, different pay scales. So that depends upon the, uh, uh, in the government sector. So I will be not elaborating on that. And private practice, it's actually depends upon our own skills to mention in one figure. It will vary as per your location, even your practice, branding, advertisement, name, etc. I have seen some home events who are earning around four to five lakhs and more, but they are very few in numbers. And on an average, but if we uh, look into on an average, how much uh, a BSMS graduate can earn. So it's uh, anywhere you can start with uh, 50 to 60,000 and up to 1.5. If you start your home, uh, clinical practice after just completing your base, so this is actually one of the best opportunity for us. Once we are graduating, we shall start practicing. We shall start our own clinic. That is that also depend upon your location. Where are you practicing? Even your practicing skill, your branding, the advertisement. Nowadays, advertisement is everywhere. So that is your own skill. You, but you can earn at least some money to survive life for private practice and, and uh, for uh, getting job also it's a very not also easy so uh, private practice we can start anytime so these are the job profile once we are done with bsma so you can work as a consultant but that requires more experience even they require some higher degrees you can work as a medical officer so directly after as a bsma graduate you can work as a medical officer and lecturer now this post has been changed to assistant professor so uh, you can work as an assistant professor, you can start your private practice and uh, in some state, 
that uh, BHMS graduate can work as a community health officer, the CHS, and health specialist. Also, health specialist uh, uh, that also uh, uh, requires some specialization in different field. You can go for diplomas, several uh, different other fellowships, program, and others. So I will be talking what are the opportunities we have on that field and GRF and SRF carries and other also so many institutes they're providing GRF and SRF. Also, you can work as a medical associate. So medical associate in the sense of you can you can work uh, just you are graduate. So you can uh, you can be a medical officer and you can help and earn uh, you can help uh, the professionals who are highly experienced on that. So this associates is a different kind of term. And I used here in the different way. So you can work as a medical officer here. So this institute at the government level recruiter, National Commission of Homeopathy, NCIS. Uh, uh, this NCH, they have they are the uh, direct level recruiter, Ministry of Irish, Central Council of Homeopathy, uh, CCRH, National Institute of Epidemiology, Chennai, ICMR. So they were they have different wings of ICMR. So all the ICMR wing they had they they recruit GRF and SRF. Even they are now uh, if you look the advertisement, they always mention MBBS, Public Irish or BDS. So opportunities is there for us. National Institute of Homeopathy. So recently they published uh, the circular. So you are eligible to uh, uh, apply for that. Even this uh, National Institute of Nutrition, Hyderabad, they have opportunities. And all India Institute of Medical Science in India. So recently I saw on um, Twitter post by CCRS, they have tied up with uh, uh, Ames Bhuvaneshwar. And even government, they mentioned that all central level hospitals and central level institute will have different means of therapeutics of practice, therapeutics of medicine. So they will give the cafeteria choice for the patient who wants to go for allopathic system, Ayurveda, Yunani, and homeopathy. So government will establish all these uh, uh, wings of uh, therapeutics in central level hospital and institute. So it's a, there is a huge opportunities uh, coming for us. And central research, uh, central council for research in Ayurveda also, they have opportunities for homeopath, uh, homeopathic graduates. So these are the government level recruiters. And if you, I will not go on that UPSC, you all may know that. And if you look the ICMR, the research job, if you want to go for the research job, you may look for CCRAs or circular, this ICMR, I already mentioned, ICMR, they have published, uh, they have different, different uh, wings. For example, nutrition, they have occupational disease and all uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, infection disease, infectious disease, all this they have wing for uh, recruiting homeopathic doctors as a research officer or medical officer on that. And so these are all the mainly this uh, research of CCRAs, ICMR and uh, this uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. We have even the Sri Chitra Trinamul Medical Science and Technology in Kerala. They have direct wing for homeopathic uh, practitioners. That's BSM graduate for SRF or GRF. Even uh, you may all know the ESIS hospitals or dispensaries. So this, this uh, is under employees state insurance company uh, corporation by ministry of labor and empowerment employment so this is the different uh, hospitals they have wings for homeopaths ayurveda and allopathic practice so they have around 144 hospital 42 hospital annexes and around 1400 esi dispensaries and uh, seven, uh, seven 18 1750 pan and dispensaries you may have opportunity to work. So they recruit homeopaths, Ayurveda, Yunani, and allopathic physician as a medical officer. So all this institution has opportunity for us to work as a medical officer. Even in Indian railways, they have 126 homeopathic clinic. For example, Beersing Hospital in Eastern Railway, 
Central Hospital of Northern Railway, GR Hospital in Western Railway. So all these hospital, even the Northeast Pointer Railway, they have option for homeopaths to work as a medical officer. Now I will be talking on the major job provider in private sector for BSMS and MD doctor. So uh, Coal India Limited. So you can, I, I, I will share that one. Uh, you, you may take on like, uh, this is uh, a number of 70, 80 companies name here. So you may take a screenshot on that or I may share that uh, slide to you in later. So you can uh, uh, read all the, you can go through the website of that institute and you may check the circulars. So we have opportunities in all these institute. So a few of them are government institute, but they do not have the government uh, uh, um, recruitment directly. They have, they can recruit you as a temporary position. And later, they, yeah, as per your skill or the policy level by the institute, they can make the job as permanent. So or Indian Institute of uh, this IIT. So recently I visited IIT Hyderabad and I was shocked to see in their uh, um, health facility, this they have hospital inside campus. And I saw along with this uh, allopathic physician. So, uh, so many IITs and central level institute, they already started to give opportunity for the student who wants to go for different kind of therapeutics of treatment. So we have opportunities, even if you, uh, so I, uh, we, we have some few alumni who are working in AIMS as a medical officer. So opportunities are coming for us. And you can, that is the government institution. So um, even drug manufacturing unit, so many uh, companies on drug manufacture and manufacturing drugs, they are recruiting homeopaths as a drug quality control officer or as a medical officer on that. There's uh, pharmacy, pharmaceutical procedures and all. So homeopath can work on that. Even in clinical trials, in homeopathy. So they require so far so many pharmaceutical companies for their clinical trial purposes, they require homeopathic physician to conduct the research. Even you know this RBSK, they are they are providing the job for medical officer, Public Health Foundation of India, National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore, they have uh, they require uh, homeopathic physician to work in the mental health issues, the psychological issues. Tata Memorial Center for Cancer uh, Hospital in Mumbai. We have in that hospital, they have separate wing for homeopaths. So uh, one of our famous doctor, he's working as a dean of that center. So they uh, uh, always they uh, publish the circular to work with as a research officer or medical officer in that center. Even, uh, uh, even they recently The JIPMAR also have good opportunities to work, Shanghai University and another, the number 33, WHO Surveillance Medical Officer. So once you complete your graduation, you may try for medical officer in WHO or other UN organization. Uh, uh, other uh, medical, uh, other uh, UN organization. So uh, you can directly apply for that, but sometimes they require experience in public health field. But if you do not have experience on public health, you may apply as a medical surveillance medical officer. So it's actually we have opportunities to work on that. Uh, this Na uh, National Institute of Ayurveda in Jaipur, they have also opportunities. Bharat Electronics Limited, Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited, Homi Bhava Cancer Hospital, Bihar, even Homi Bhava Cancer Hospital in Mumbai. They have opportunities even in uh, National Aluminium Company they also have opportunities. NIT, so th there are so many NITs in there. Uh, we have opportunities to work as a SRF or JRF in NITs also. So you have to loop the circular of that institute. So they always publish the, they always give the opportunities. Now they are giving options, MBBS, graduate of MBBS, BDS or Ayush. So we have, now we have opportunities to work. 
National Health System Resource Center, NHSRC, this Tata Memorial Center in Punjab, this uh, National Homeopathy Research Institute in Mental Health, Kottayam, Kerala. So we have opportunities to work on that. And this uh, National Institute of Homeopathy. So this is the, he is the uh, this institute is the government level recruiter. Metal Scrap Trade Corporation Limited, Kolkata, Broadcast Engineering Consultant, India, National Building Construction, Banaras in Homeopath, uh, as like uh, the University of uh, West Bengal University of Health Sciences. So we have opportunity to work on that. Medical Service Recruitment Board in Chennai uh, is a, a competition common of a commission of India, New Delhi. Anjali Mukherjee, Health Total Recruiting Homeopathic Doctors. This uh, JP Brothers and Medical Publisher, BZN, even BZN also have good opportunities to work. Uh, uh, you, we may all know BZN is the uh, best publishers for homeopathic books. So we have opportunities to work in BZN also. So if you look around the banking and insurance sector, these are the few, there are 15 health insurance companies they're providing uh, their uh, medical coverage so is coming from homeopath. So you can work there as a medical officer. So HDFC, actually for the uh, the patient who take, who apply for the mediclaim, you, if you work as an insurance officer, health, uh, medical health insurance officer, then you need to verify on that. So all the institute, they have opportunities to work uh, for us as in Medical Health Insurance Officer, HDFC, Bajaj Alliance, Tata EIG, SBI, Bank of Baroda, uh, Genpact, Bharati X, uh, General, uh, Future Generals, National uh, Insurance Companies. So these are the uh, organization they have uh, opportunities to work with them. Now I'll be talking about the very different topic, this online consultation or, or telemedicine. So this figure was uh, taken during COVID time. And it mentioned that around on roads of Indian population, they consulted doctors online. And online homeopathy connectivity worldwide in more than 100 countries. So anywhere we can connect to any patient. If we want to start our clinic online. So the telemedicine market in India is 7,000 crore in 2021. And according to starts, it says that after in 2025, the growth will be five times higher and it will be around 40 crores of global telemedicine market. In uh, And uh, it will be 40 crores, but global telemedicine market is 3 lakhs crore. And that will be expecting 10 times growth in 2027. So for us, the telemedicine, uh, actually, uh, the opportunities are uh, coming for us very uh, uh, well. If, if you know the telemedicine uh, platform, one is Practo, Liberty, and all these are there. So if you start opening your profile on that, you may get patient from that. And it's a very good opportunity to earn from that platform. And even if you start your own platform for uh, online consultation or telemedicine, you may grow higher. And there is no limit your career in local market. So you can spread your career in nationally and internationally. So homeopaths uh, actually uh, from my Bangladesh perspective, so many Bangladeshis, they are working in Middle East, Europe and other countries as a labor or, or any other work. So uh, for that country, actually, the medical cost is very high. And they can consult homeopaths. Even so many Indians also, they are working in different parts of the world. So if you start your online consultation, you may get all this patient from this all around the world and you can parcel your medicine also to them directly. So many doctors now they are starting, they have started their online consultation and telemedicine uh, in national, even an international. You may start your own chain clinic. You chain clinic means you, Different, different, they have clinics in different parts of the world. Recently, they opened one clinic in Dhaka also. And they have two clinics set up in Bangladesh. One, one is in Dhaka and another one in another uh, part of the uh, uh, division of our, uh, one of division here. 
So uh, you may start your clinic, Batras, this Star Homeopathy, like Star Homeopathy, they are popular in Hyderabad, Homeocare International. You may know this Life Force Homeopathy. So these are the chain clinic. So after completing your BHMS, along with your friends, you can start your chain clinic. So it's a, actually a very good idea to start our setup if we want to go for clinical practice. So this is the this point actually comes from the population that in in general patients wait for the doctors, but some clinic you may see doctors are waiting for the patient. So you may see somewhere so many uh, crowd they are waiting to meet the doctors, but in some chambers or clinic the doctors is waiting for patient. So actually these points I am telling for the. Uh, newly pass out homeopaths who is still planning what to do so if you start your own clinic this will be helpful to learn this one so how to measure how we can know what are the point actually we should do to we shall not wait for the patient patient shall wait for us so what are the point we actually require to look on that so first thing is we need to remember that first impression is the best impression so whatever the thing is, if any patient come to us, the first impression is the best impression. We have to build up the best impression firstly. And that impression that improves be with patient or uh, improves in patient or that, that uh, confidence can improves in doctors as well. And that confidence leads to trust and medical Practice is associated with confidence and trust, these both. So we have to build up our confidence and trust with both patient. So this, uh, 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 you may know Dr. Pro professor B.M. Heja, that he was the visiting professor of Middlesex Hospital London. So he mentioned that trust stimulates immunity. So immunity here is the best practice. So once you can build up your confidence and trust with patient, you can stimulate the, your best practice. So impression that improves our confidence and that confidence help us to grow our trust and that trust help us to build our best practices. So every physician must first gain patient's confidence, even that is taught close also in genius of homeopathy, he mentioned on that. So physician first, we need to gain confidence, patient's confidence. If patient is confident, he follows well with your treatment. So this is the first thing. If the patient is confident with your consultation, he will follow your treatment procedure. If a patient is confident, he come with a new patient on his new next visit. So so many, uh, this is the so many experienced uh, physicians, uh, maybe here, uh, even you may have ideas on, uh, you, are, you all are experienced doctors. So you know on that point, if you make any, uh, if you grow confident on patient in the next visit, he will come along with another patient. If a or he, he still he follows. So the first thing, if your medicine does not work, but if you gain the confidence, the patient will come to you in the next follow. -up. If the patient is not confident, there will be a no follow-up. So if the first time the selection of medicine is very difficult sometimes for the for the new the, uh, beginners. So for us, we should not be a hopeless. We need to grow our confidence level on patient. If medicine does not work on the first time, the patient will come to us for the follow-up. So that time you can do your uh, case taking and you can prescribe the best medicine for the second prescription as a second prescription or the that can be the first prescription as well. If patient is not confident, if paid is paid the fee, he follows with no confidence. So yeah, the main first thing is to gain confidence on patient. And also he will discourage the others to uh, other new patient to come with your clinic. Finally, he loses his confidence on doctor and as well as homeopathy. So that is the point comes on homeopathy is a placebo effect. So
so so many doctors actually who are, who are practicing and uh, we may not able to get the confidence improve confidence on patient so for the patient become hopeless on the doctor and even they become hopeless on homeopathic treatment and in that point we need to refer patient with our fellows so we always if if i am treating any patient and if that person is not getting improved we shall always refer so that is the best practice in homeopathy so our homeopaths will not be on fault if that manage uh, uh, if we cannot manage our, uh, our patient working on few uh, uh, how homeopaths can work in different countries of the world so we have opportunities to work in middle east this uae uae oman bahrain qatar so they have different kind of medical licensing practicing exam we after completing bhms we have we need to check their website and we have to apply for that medical licensing exam once you um, get that uh, uh, clear that medical license exam you can go there and you can practice even so many other countries they will offer you job so with that job visa but you need to clear that medical licensing exam on that country even in usa uk and australia all these countries you need to clear the medical licensing exam and based on that you can travel and you can work as a private practitioner or you can work as a medical officer in government setup as well as private setup that depends upon your uh, skills so if you look around the uh, countries of europe homeopathy practiced in 40 countries out of 42 countries and 28 countries have introduced homeopathy in their legislation and seven countries have protected title seven countries have established it, uh, established public register and 21 countries non conventional practitioners may practice homeopathy so you you uh, you may, some some countries they does not allow to write the prefix doctor but you can practice homeopathy You, and in so many countries of europe the, even the mbbs fellows they do not write doctor as a prefix on that name so so many countries in europe and other parts of the world you may practice homeopaths this 100 countries actually they are allowed to practice so in that countries you can practice homeopathy without some countries they allow to write doctor some great canada so for us actually we have op- opportunity to migrate and as an homeopath so there is a code there is a number of code and you can apply through that code as an homeopathic practitioner so in canada you may not uh, you may not uh, uh, able to write prefix doctor but you can work as an homeopathic practitioner so you have to look around their websites and all so we have opportunities to work in different parts of the country we have to explore the field and another good point here is uh, indian medical degrees is well accepted around the world compared to other countries medical degree and uh, so many countries around the world they actually go for the verification of your degrees so once they get the degree you obtain from india so the verification become a different uh, is a very less formulated so it's a very good opportunity for us like if someone wants to go abroad and practice homeopaths so opportunities are there for us so now let's talk few courses in clinical field what we can do after completing homeopathy so these are the seven subjects we can pursue homeopathy in india now but this uh, year onwards there will be two more subject they have added by ncis in this year so next year onward we will have seven uh, nine subjects to pursue md in homeopathy so uh, materia medica homeopathic repertory ordinary medicine psychiatry pharmacy pediatrics practice of medicine and newly added to uh, degree uh, to subjects are uh, dermatology and another is community medicine so now government is uh, uh, ship days so many most of the homeopathic hospital we are having so many patient in skin departments so government is trying to open another 
MD in dermatology and another is community medicine because uh, even I did my MD in um, JSPS Hyderabad. So that time we used to go to uh, community, the visit the community for conducting medical camps and all. So government is also exploring this uh, giving opportunity to homeopaths in the uh, to treating the rural people. So opportunities are coming for us. Even uh, you, once we get the uh, MD in community medicine, we will be able to apply for jobs in different medical colleges in MBBS or these allopathic hospitals and all. So opportunities are coming for us. So uh, now let me talk about what are the different sector, non-clinical sector we can go after completing BASMS. So uh, this we can go for MSc and another is MPH or MH or MBA. So MSc in human genome, genetics, food science, epidemiology, medical anatomy, biochemistry, applied psychology, clinical research, uh, this uh, medical biochemistry, genetics, food sciences, health sciences, yoga therapy. So all these are the uh, MSc courses we can go after that. Even so many um, uh, uh, hospitals, uh, so, so many institutions, once you are having your medical degree and after that if you pursue your MSc, Masters of, of Science in, for example, Applied Psychology. So once you get that degree, you are eligible to apply for the Department of Psychology. So Applied Psychology. So uh, so many universities in India, they're providing this psychology degree. So you can work as an assistant professor on that department. So offer many... Epidemiology, so many institution of public health, if you have this MSc in epidemiology, you may go for this uh, uh, as, uh, assistant professor position in different public institutions. Even so many organizations, they are... So many organizations, uh, sorry for this. So, um, uh, so many organizations, they are providing opportunities to work, even the microbiology and genetics. So if you, uh, the field is open for us. So many institutions in India, they provide all these degree in food sciences, uh, this nutrition. Even I have seen in Apollo Hospital in Hyderabad, who has completed her, uh, her BASMS degree. After that, he pursued, uh, pursued uh, MSc nutrition. And he is what she's working as a nutritionist in Apollo Hyderabad Hospital. And he's also getting the same kind of patient uh, as compared to other department. So it's actually good opportunity for us to, if we want to go for the different field as well. So this is another uh, MSc site. And if we go for the MHA or pub MBA or public MHAs, Masters of Hospital Administration or Public Health MPH or MBA in Healthcare Professional, this management courses. So these are the opportunities we have, Masters of Public Health. So if you, I have, uh, uh, we have one, we have few alumni who have done Masters of Public Health in different institutions and they are now working with uh, so many organizations, in UN organization, in, even in Indian organization, in the national, international organization in India, and they are earning lots of money and facilities actually they provide. So MBA in hospital management, if you go for this MBA in healthcare management or hospital management, you can work as an operational manager manager in any hospital and work as a pharmaceutical management, hospital administrative section. So they also provide good salary and opportunities for us. So we may go, we either we go or we may choose to clinical side, we may choose to go for this non-clinical side as well. So these are the major institution in India, they are offering health related courses. So you may take that uh, screenshot on that of that. So you may read it later because this is a huge number of uh, institution I, I just collected here. So all these institutions they have offered they are offering health related health science related courses. This is not the clinical courses. So only government only homeopathic medical colleges are providing clinical courses. It's MD in homeopathy in different subjects, but. No, uh, in, in all these institutions, they are providing MSc or MHA or different health related subject in MA degree on that. So I completed my MPH from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. So this here, this is the here it is. 
so you have opportunity even if you go for this hospital management courses these are the uh, Institute, they are providing this uh, distance learning, so you can uh, get your degrees from distance learning courses. So all these institute, uh, they are providing this health hospital management courses, and these are the universities. They are offering PhD for homeopaths in India. So PhD, actually, uh, only two uh, for PhD, we need not to go for any specific homeopathic college or medical college or university. So that depends on your topic. If you choose a topic in different field, so you may go for different. For an eligibility for the different institute, they have different uh, criteria. For example, once you complete your graduation, you may not eligible for direct applying for this PhD. You may require any MSc degree. So for example, if you pursue public health in PH, so you may go in different parts of the world, not in Indian institution for uh, this uh, PhD degree. Even after, once you complete your PhD, you may go for postdoc. So I have seen so many BASMS graduates. They have completed this, their health sciences courses and even they are now uh, uh, working in different parts of the world, even different, they are working as a faculty in the different institution, different universities of the world. So opportunities for us is, uh, uh, and all this institute, what I listed here, they accept Irish graduate for as in uh, to pursue PhD, but you require any MSc degree, but MS degree, uh, any, any uh, master degree to apply for that. So these are the institute in India and several other institute also they are providing this opportunity for PhD. So you may try for that. And also few universities, they are providing this diploma and certificate courses after BASMS. For example, if you are, uh, uh, if you want to become a specialized in dermatology. You may go for the PG diploma or certificate courses on dermatology. Even if an adolescent pediatrics help, you may, you may go for child and adolescent and family counseling, counseling, is de uh, development neurology, palliative care, hospital management. if you want to uh, become a specialist on that field all these pg diploma and certificate courses in india they are offering so you may try on that all these courses you may take a screenshot on that and uh, otherwise i will share in the letter in that screen so you can go and check the opportunities whatever we have in, uh, after completing bsms even these are the fellowship giving by maharashtra university of health sciences so they are providing advanced homeopathy courses, homeopathic psychiatry and counseling. So these are the fellowship courses, even fellowship certificate they are providing by Madhya Pradesh Medical Science University. So they are providing fellowship certificate on diabetes, obesity, GIT, holistic care. So in other universities also they are providing the fellowship and uh, uh, diplomas. So you may need to check different, different university websites. So you will uh, get through all these things. Now let me, uh, I'm just uh, almost the point of finishing. So let me tell about one point for the success, what I learned during my uh, uh, um, graduation days. So success is for as for see your goal. So first of thing, we need to see my goal. That is the fixing my aim, what I want to do. Shall I go for higher study? Shall I go for clinical? practice, shall I go for job or shall what shall I do? So that is that I need to see my goal first. And later we need to understand the obstacle to reach that goal and create a positive mental picture. So this is very important thing, create a positive mental picture. So my aim is fixed and I know the obstacle. What is uh, obstacling in my picture and then 
clear your mind of self doubt so this is also the self doubt we have to clear our self doubt yes we have to gain confidence on me even in our practice or whatever the thing is if i gain confidence on me i will succeed embrace the challenge so we have to take the challenge stay on track and so the world for last as is so the world you can so these are the meaning of success so we follow all the if or if we follow all these steps we may be successful at the some point of our time so you all may know this person dr abul kalam azad he was the president of former president of india he meant he said that if you fail never give up because f a i l means first attempt in learning end is not the end in the fact e n d means if for never dies if you get no as an answer remember e n o no means next opportunity so always we have next opportunity so we have to look for the opportunities so if you do not look for the opportunity you will not get anything so once you are completing your graduation you will be uh, thinking of doing what for so you have to look for the opportunity so then opportunity will come to you so you have to go for the opportunity opportunity will not come to you directly if you look for opportunity opportunity will come to you so the first thing first start should be from within ourselves you may know this lizard is so charles darwin mentioned that it is not the strongest of the species that survive not the most intelligent but the most responsive to change so this lizard they change their color according to their environment or according to the situation so the charles darwin he mentioned that as an homeopaths because we have we are so we need to change our color as per the situation or we need to respond based on the situation or environment then you will succeed so i will be finishing with this quote and this is uh, uh, a poet uh, sri shri rao so uh, he was a telugu poet he he had created his own era so that mean ye yagam nadi so that era is mine so now the this era is for homeopath so we have to create our own era to succeed no one will come to us to make us successful so we have to create our own era to be successful so these are the references i took from uh, for this presentation and i also mentioned some few uh, statistics uh, references on that um, so thank you and i have my mail id and whatsapp number here so if you require any kind of further um, uh, information on, on that you may text on me text to me or you can uh, send me a mail so thank you all um, thank you nis alumni association for giving me opportunity to speak on this for so thank you thank you all Dr. Suman Biswas, my compliments to you. You are wonderful exposition. I think you have inspired many people who want to go away from the mainstream. But uh, your focus was on private practice. I am very glad. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, experience. I also learned so many things. Uh, your your slide presentation was wonderful. the only thing that whenever you give long list break it into three or four pieces so that it is readable i will request the uh, organizers to publish this letter uh, this lecture uh, for the uh, for the general public god bless you thank you very much our next thank speaker you. i invite uh, dr kalyani
देव डॉक्टर देव नारायण कल्याणी द प्रोफेसर ऑफ एन आई एच एंड द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ अवर एलुमिन एसोसिएशन डॉक्टर देव कल्याणी यू आर ऑल यू आर ऑल सेट आर यू ऑल सेट गुड 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 वंडरफुल our most respected sir teacher of teachers our heartiest respect heartiest pranam to him we are really thankful and we pay thanks to our inaugurator dr chintamani naik professor chintamani naik to suman bisas for giving brilliant presentations this today's seminar to me is really a great seminar really in the true sense it's the international seminar speakers are participating moderator speaker moderator uh, you know good data they are participating from india and abroad and guided by a person who is known to be a great person great teacher of teachers brothers we have many famous and renowned doctors in homeopathy but what we want is more great teachers like dr mp arya sir we are inspired seriously whatever we are today by his and their inspirations we are really thankful and our heartiest pranam to sir again now what we are talking about regarding the 300 cases of degenerative joint disease since last six phases let me brief in a very short period that i told you that nih is institution who should fight against the challenges not in the ordinary diseases and degenerative joint disease we have experience in outdoor and indoor of nursery stroke homeopathy that the challenges said to be not curable not controllable disease as degenerative joint disease not only can be controlled it can be cured we can prevent relapse by documents we are going on showing from first phase to seventh phase in the first phase we have seen clinical changes in the second phase we have seen number of documents of complete cure of intervertebral disc spaces that means cartilaginous regeneration of spinal cord then the third phase we have seen osteopathic changes can be completely regressed completely cured by radiological documentations then you have observed this sclerosis which is called to be a very serious disease progressing towards malignancy can be completely cured by homeopathy treatment by number of documents next phase we have seen that subluxation is a serious surgical disease can also be completely cured simply by homeopathy treatment even without taking much advantages of physical medicine the last phase we have seen spondylosis with various type of radiological changes various type of bone disorders bone changes can be completely cured and the whole spine can become completely normal and that normalcy can be maintained for many more years we cannot tell at this moment for life long but we have never seen a single case to be relapsed really this is a challenge to the medical science and we are progressing to face these challenges today we will see few cases of degenerative joint disease completely cured radiologically certified by the radiologists not by any homeopathic doctors last phase unfortunately there are some network issue that's why we conclude we could not conclude the whole phase that's why today we will give the remaining phases of this degenerative joint disease simply by showing the documentations so this was the master chart of documentation let me repeat it with which that first is heading for serial number research registration number opd registration number name age sex and religion time taken for radiological cure from the date to the date total months taken 
now radiological diagnosis by radiologist next is the drug given regarding this drug i am telling why i am mentioning this the drug it has been experienced through research works i told you before that i had a trial with more than 200 cases by simply simply giving palliative measures by short drugs like rastan bhai and hypericum depending on the few straight cut symptoms of this three drug not even a single case was radiologically cured few cases definitely got improvement but the number was less in percentage but whenever we gave and we tried with number of hundreds and hundreds of cases of degenerative joint disease with constitutional drugs totality inhibitory drug number of cases we have seen radiological improvements number of cases we have seen complete cure of radi radiological changes and in many many cases maximum improvement we had the constraint to collect all the documents of many of patients in our opd to show you the number of cures more in number the constraint was our opd patient standard were not that much sound in intellectually and financially they could not provide extra plates number 1 number 2 the moment they got clinical improvement their complaints are off they do not turn back to our hospital and during those period we did not had that much of infrastructure to bring them back to continue the treatment to see up to the radiological cure level that is why many cases after getting symptomatic cure and complete reestablishment of mobility and ability they don't turn back to opd to show radiological fibral changes that was the constraints that will work in due course of time that's why d drug has been mentioned number of documents presented here number of visits in opd cost of treatment has been given we will see here that how much how minimum cost is taken or patient has afforded to get his this incurable and uncontrollable disease cured and how many times patient had to come in opd we will see the minimum number and maximum number with average numbers up to that so far i can remember up to 12 number 12 we are able to show the documentations from 13 onward there are some instrumental error so i will try to show the documentations from 30 onwards 30 onwards one more information this is very important that table of total dgd is how many cases we have seen then the documentation i don't want to repeat the documentation that it provided the case is shown here is completely cured certified by the radiologist from number 13 i will try to show you all the documents you can see left on to gain your confidence regarding this type of disease can be easily cured but for sure this is easily because homeopathic system all the principles are very easy if we just realize let me show you from case number 14 Case number fourteen. If you are able to see the plate, the drug was given Bryony Alba. Cases of osteitis. Documents are present at six. Number of visits were thirteen. Total cost was sixty-five rupees only. this is before treatment this is after treatment 
completely normal study. Case number 15. Because of the time constraint, I am not enlarging. You will be able to see later on. These are the changes before treatment. After treatment, normal study. Case number 16, which was a case of lysiasis that been vertebral column, vertebral is slipping out of the normal anatomical position, causes lysiasis that is becoming normal in next reports. Case number 17, before treatment, it was the case of osteophytes. After treatment, it became normal. Case number 18. It was the case of again osteophytes. Drug was calcarea flow. Documents were six. Only eight times he had to come after treatment, curing of the pathology, bony pathologies. In many reports, we'll see some other changes, except this particular changes has been mentioned here. This is before treatment. Case number 19, after treatment, normalization. This was also a case of osteophytic changes. Floric acid was the drug. Case number 20, before treatment, it was also a case of osteophytic changes. Silicia was given. And the reports were normal. Now, many reports we are finding out of NIH because as per choice of the patient, as per their convenience, many times they have done the regular reports to outside. That has given us privileges. That is biasness depending on the departments or other any, uh, any shortfalls can be avoided by showing the in and outside reports. So it can be claimed that degenerative joint disease is a global problem of elderly people's overuse, unused, disuse of joints, movement with or without hypocalcium or overweight. That means the common factors, the, it was there but that those factors are not seriously considered. We didn't ask the patient to have physiotherapy for all. Only the severe discomfort, patient discomfort, they were given first advice to give heat application, rest and movements to give to some time, some rest, not absolute rest, and having the normal mobility of the joints. But few cases we had to advise according to the seriousness of the disease for physiotherapy, that also advice from our research department, not by the physiotherapist. We have observed that even without physiotherapy, patient can be completely cured, that you can experience of your own. I don't want to go into details of literature. This was, the, this was an article prepared for publication. Now, the targets. This is very important. Time taken for clinical cure, 1.5 months minimum, maximum was 18 months, average seven months. Just imagine, a bony disorder usually grows very slowly by few years. Within 1.5, by one and a half months, we can cure the cases to some, and maximum taken has been taken one year and six months. Average seven months to cure complete radiological changes. Time taken for radiological cure, nine months, sorry, what I've typed is clinical cure, 
clinical employment we can show it in a very short period time taken for radiological cure is minimum 9 months maximum 37 months 16 months average and that also without any relapse for few more years till 1916 means till my retirement i have never observed or recorded a single case who has returned back a similar type of complaints with some bony changes radiological changes that is our our claim by our literature by our masters that cure in two senses can be established by individualistic constitutional single drug total cost of the treatment number of total visits in a night was minimum 3 just imagine within 3 visits we can cure radiological changes maximum 17 average is 8 visits total cost treatment including medicines it was rupees 5 per patient per visit 15 rupees minimum 85 rupees minimum which cannot be imagined the cost effectiveness anyway these are the references for this literal discussion now we will go to today's target that is during that course of treatment what we had we requested our opd department because we don't have that much of infrastructure in sir we requested opd department to send patient who ever complaining of joint pain whether neck waist knee any pain so they used to refer all sort of pain all sort of your joint pains to our departments and by mistake many pain in muscles are also are also same that's why we are fortunate to get incidentally that number of cases of other type of arthropathic diseases that means other than degenerative joint disease while we are seeing the patient we found that patient is not suffering from degenerative disease they are suffering from other causes other complaints as we called as arthropathic disorders that also was treated constitutionally in the same manner given by our masters and we have seen miraculous recoveries miraculous cure let me show you a brief arthropathy and its homeopathic management it can it is a disease it can start from the intuitive life till last stage any time it can appear and can affect any joints arthropathy and its homeopathic management congenital acquired acquired arthropathy trauma post traumatic deficiency disorders previous cases we have discussed how what are the common deficiencies like calcium vitamin d then vitamin c common vitamin b complexes protein disorders and many other deficiencies including hormone and enzymes the med common medicines this is not homeopathy i am telling just to emphasize the most common medicines can be thought of calcrefos abrotenum etc but we should never forget these drugs mentioned in our clinical repertory or clinical books are simply to palliate simply to control the conditions many many times we can get complete recovery by those palliative or short drugs but ultimately we have to switch to the conventional drug to get expected improvement that is serological or other hematological normalcy trauma is very think of symphytum arnica beriberi is well known to all of you ruta onium hypericum ledum etc there is a complaint high fever and no medic 
no medication going to solve it that is infection when you find that persistent fever not rapidly losing weight only fever is continuing and joint or muscle pains intermittently or continuously along with the fever immediately think of forgetting about joint you think of some serological causes so persistent fever not tuberculosis not other infectious or other serious diseases we should think of infection first what are those infection aso vdrl afb and hiv anti streptococcus no title vdrl afb hiv you will be astonished to know in near future whenever i will get the opportunity i will show you that more than 70 cases have been completely cured serologically of aso title within a very short period which is where in conventional system of medicine it needs to we are under high dose penicillin to control it and the risk factor is ultimately if it is not being treated the case may go to rheumatic fever rheumatic arthritis ultimately serious rheumatic heart which will cripple the whole life vdr is another serious disease you will know as it was bacillus and hiv is that the common infection that we should think of when the fever is continuing with joint or muscle pains these are the very common drugs from repertory all of you know that penicillin streptococcin staphylococcin drosera maxol cicilanib etc this drug may come in the picture but they are not the only drugs for the disease now degenerative we have thought about we have learned osteoarthritic osteophytosis spondylosis sclerosis disc degeneration this case is sublectation all the cases we have shown in our previous presentation previous phases that homeopathy can boldly cure those cases this is another serious disease you know very well rheumatic art rheumatoid arthritis immunological disease this is also a progressive disease uncontrollable incurable so called rf factor positive anti cct antibody positive hla b27 ankylosis spondylitis is positive these are the common immunological factors which makes the patient cripple joint pain maybe thought about the degenerative joint disease but we should we cannot leave those patient when we find the generalized changes this test should be done before conclusion the symptom the treatment is absolutely constitutional sometimes needs symptomatic treatment sometimes needs short palliation to avoid continuous modern medicine medication or just to make the patient to some extent able to perform his daily duties to continue the treatment other is patient may be fed up to give up the treatment now there are metabolic diseases also also arthropathy this also i'll show you later on whatever i'm showing as points you can see that hla hla uh, sorry uh, aso titan other hla b27 all i will show you later on in this pure doc documentations diabetic mellitus urea these are the common cases of joint disease usually you think of articulants insulin urinum nitricum formicolum for to palliate and to cure the same simple principle and path that is take the history evaluate repertorize come to a single conclusion give the medicine see the beauty of homeopathy increase your confidence now professional arthropathy we know these are day by day increasing by sitting in the we have forget to how to sit how to lie how to walk how to stand is very much unfortunate that we are using those in its furnitures which makes your bone joints spinal axis irregular there is one picture you see what happens by using mobiles first rate seeing from this end then gradually vision is disturbing the mobile is coming up then the person is bending 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 and becoming a patient of persistent continuous patient of spondylosis or many other diseases ultimately which leads to headache irritation even like heart attack i told you before 
the sometime by compression of the cervical nerves the branches on the petrol major and ma uh, minor petrol is major and minor sometime if it happens in the left side it is been presented exactly as heart attack so anyway this hitting posture means the spinal cord must be straight and the anatomical curvature should be maintained while you are walking sitting lying we are preferring soft very soft bedded beds to lie to keep our spine during sleep in a non anatomical pathological position we are choosing revolving chair very soft chair to keep to habitate our spine to sit on pathological posture and inviting behaviors likewise sitting standing walking everything should be exactly physiological manner otherwise we are inviting behaviors cervical spondylitis lumbar spondylitis we have seen number of cases these are the common palliative drugs bryonia rostrox semisic yoga pipramate radium bromide bagnesia for lactantis etc and etc neoplastic sarcoma i have shown you that sclerosis is such a disease which can ultimately lead to sarcoma this is a very serious disease in early stage if it is not been diagnosed the case is patient is definitely going to hospitality the common medicine for palliative drugs are euphorbium palisanetum marsanetum again i am telling our youth teacher is to tell that any case whatever may be the drug may be from ab scan to ginkgo medallicum any drug any moment to any person can come as total cure symptom necrotic changes may cause similar type of complaints arthropathy osteomyelitis you know all of all of you after trauma infection of the bones that also give some bony changes if other symptoms are not available for for the time we can think of lactis sinica just to control etc these are the rising signs means homeopathy is gradually proving to the profession that gradually gradually we are we are claiming we are not claiming we are proving that we can cure incurable and so called uncontrollable cases just a minute i am not that much expert in tackling computer please excuse me now let me show you some cases of aso titer pure aso titer case reports i think you were able to see 378 is what are available to 261 clear it is an improving case
621. Yes, sir. Two hundred is normal. Only one eighty-two. This is completely cured. Time taken. Dates are given in the report. You can see later on. Here you are having time constraints. Simply few specimens I am showing. Later on, once I get time, I will show you. As I told you, more than seventy cases of ASO data cure. This is two hundred. Fifty-nine. Well, you will, you will, you find any case giving pain in multiple joints. Once you must ask the patient that did you had pain sore before. If you once get the pain sore before to any patient of arthritis, you should not forget to. See this ASO data. 117 became normal. Sorry. Oh, this I have shown already. Two hundred thirty-seven. Two hundred twenty, coming down. Two hundred twenty six. Then thirty-five became completely normal. Two hundred ninety-five point six. Only sixty-five. Six hundred. One ninety two.
here i like to show you that few samples of diseases by immune disorders ntcc antibody which is precursor of rf factor rheumatoid arthritis Two hundred. Clear. Five is normal. It has become two hundred. By homeopathic treatment, this is another serious disease. Usually claimed to be incurable. Ultimately, patient invites for this anti-CCP factors. Are positive, then deformity, pain joint scars. Ninety-three. Clear. See very important. Another R case we will see. We might have factor positive. See, sixty point two. Twenty is normal before treatment. Then become the case becomes three hundred and eighteen. What happens sometimes? We have seen during the Inclination phase, patient comes to us. We start treatment, but patient goes on improving the complaints and laboratory data. But if we find that patient is feeling generalized better, that means sleep appetite, fresh feeling is improving, we should ignore the complaints and laboratory investigation. We should continue. We should stick to that treatment. Two hundred eighty-five, three That means after the giving medicine, the case was gradually progressing severely, seriously. Our medicine could not control initially, but by providing time and sticking to the constitutional drug, gradually found that patient has started improving again. Plus clinical improvement, ability, mobility improvements. Another case, forty-nine. This is a very interesting case. I am telling you. Let me show you the report first. Eight point four. This is a very shortest period. See, ten one one twenty three, and treatment was started. Nine twenty one. So they report patient was simply complaining of typical bryonia. All the complaints of bryonia. Bryonia usually said to be an acute acute condition. Do not have that much depth, but by this bryonia, you see such a serious disease is getting cured symptomatologically and serologically.
another case of RF factor, positive RF factor. 240, normal is 20. Level is very high, means complaints and clinical troubles are very high, including deformities. It is well known to all of us that usually patient comes to us in a later phase when common medicines are not giving that much response or he is becoming fed up by conventional medicine. See, the hundreds have become come down to 63. Anyway, these are all the inspiring information. In the near future, I will try to show you many more when we talk about the immune disorders. But what I want to tell you that the so-called incurable, uncontrollable diseases, we should take challenge for it. Because homeopathy should snatch out the scope and areas where other system is limited, is their constraints, will be able to will be able to occupy that space. Anyway. Thank you very much for kind listening for seven phases, in a long phase. Many, many thanks. This is simply, I am really grateful by giving this information to you to get inspiration. If one person can incidentally or accidentally can bring number of cases of cure, all of us, if we try confidently, we can bring number, hundreds and hundreds of cure cases to present before the government to give emphasis on homeopathy that homeopathy has got different scope and area of treatment medical science. Thank you very much. Again, I'm giving my heartiest pronoun to my sir, teacher of teachers, Dr. M.P. Arya sir, really it's a blessed CME, I should say. Thank you, sir. Um, I guess, sir, uh, there is some issues. Uh, sir is not currently present at the backstage. I don't know what is going on. Okay, no problem. We can wait for a few more minutes. Oh, no problem. Yes, sir. Uh, just hold on then until then. We have a few questions. Oh, please. We have a few questions uh, from the viewers. Uh, I'll request uh, Dr. Suman if you can join again. Uh, I had requested uh, for Professor Arya sir to join. Also, is Dr. Suman here? Yes. Uh, uh, sir, sir, over to you, sir, for uh, summing it up. Okay, okay. Dr. Dev Narayan Kalyani, you are a homeopathic surgeon without scalpel, and you have done a wonderful job. I think uh, he deserves our standing ovation. Uh, beautiful, very, very enthusiastic. Very, very uh, learning experience for all of us. And I must uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Tagani for excellent exposition. Uh, I think uh, you are the only orthopedic surgeon in the world uh, who does not use scalpel and yet he cures people without charging them for the OT charges for the anesthesia charges, for the hospital beds, and uh, for uh, minimum money. And gives a, gives a what, what we call not only relief in the, in the, in the uh, presenting complaint, but the quality of life improves with homeopathic treatment. Wonderful exposition. I think people should learn lessons from Dr. Uh, Kalyani. Uh, Documentation is the most important part of our uh, activity. We lack documentation. Uh, Dr. Kalyani has uh, 
very meticulously maintain his documentation and that is what uh, uh, survivors in the in the in the world of uh, scientific field get the evidence based medicine uh, which we complain of homeopathy is the evidence based medicine right from the beginning we are we are practicing evidence based medicine right from hanuman's time maybe it's about 300 years uh, ago uh, i think uh, you have done proud to homeopathy keep it uh, good work and maintain and please publish these these reports what is what is important because uh, today they is that if you publish either you publish or you perish uh, homeopathic results are wonderful only thing that we have lack documentation collect documentation present paper proper, properly and publish it and i think uh, people will uh, run to you for homeopathy treatment i am sure uh, homeopathy has a wonderful uh, time ahead and i think uh, people will flock to homeopathy once again the homeopathy has come to life uh, only after uh, we have started our graduate and post graduate institution and something like national institute of homeopathy uh, kolkata and the new which is coming near delhi uh, i must congratulate uh, the organizers uh, for uh, inviting these two very very well uh, read very uh, elucidating uh, lectures by both of them uh, dr viswas and dr uh, dr kalyani and uh, i thank you very much for uh, inviting me i enjoyed thoroughly and i hope i uh, sincerely hope that everybody who has listened to uh, these lectures now or subsequently will enjoy uh, equally thank you very much i return back to you and uh, god bless you uh, give you uh, strength and vigor to do the excellent work which you are doing thank you god bless you thank you sir uh, thank you so much sir and we are really proud to share the screen with you uh, it's a proud privilege uh, pranam sir because uh, uh, some of our alumni had uh, been seeing you for the first time and they had been asking uh, mprs sir was our alumni so uh, my proud uh, reply was that he was one of the architects who made nih happen one of the founders one of those brains who made nih happen national institute of homeopathy now there are a lot of people to look after nih but you all sirs were the uh, dreamers who dreamed uh, had the dream to bring a national institute for the population of india and we thank you so much for being with us we had a lot of questions uh, i had sent uh, arya sir to your whatsapp and also to dr suman okay, i think I, there is no question yeah, i uh, i don't think we we'll require any question after the listening to these two um. okay sir it's it's a, it's a, 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 a you. and you can publish them later on yeah uh, right sir and there was another request from you uh, i should say it's an adesh from you that uh, this uh, the extensive work need to be published of uh, dr suman uh, through this live uh, video i will request our honorary editor uh, our dr d uh, who is uh, heading the e journal online journal of national institute of homeopathy alumni association papere od uh, to take up this issue and our respected editorial board will be uh, kind enough to go through the topic the transcript of today's the dissertation and if they find fit uh, obviously it will be published in the letter course in our online journal and thank you kalyani sir uh, our respect for you on this evidence based homeopathy uh, the you had been the architect to show us how to keep the records and how they need to be uh, published due to time constraints uh, we had few separate segregated questions from several corners to whatsapp to uh, messenger on my personal chat that 
why Brania is selected and why not uh, Arsenic is uh, selected. So those repertorizations and minor etiquettes can be done uh, in a later stage in our uh, various classroom uh, orientations. But uh, these are published documents from a vast OPD of National Center of Homeopathy where at present there are a turnover of over 3,000 patients per day and with a greater infrastructure and with a great leadership of uh, under the guidance of our uh, respected uh, minister uh, Sarvananda Sanal ji, Dr. Manjupara ji, the respected uh, Union Minister of State who had been in an edge few days ago and they had made a lot of uh, announcements for the development of NIH, of Salt Lake campus, as well as for the satellite campus at Delhi, Narela. And uh, we have our uh, respective team of doctors and administrators headed by our director, deputy medical uh, superintendent, who are looking after the day-to-day -day work of National of Homeopathy and the hospitals. So these are the papers need to be saluted, and we expect our beloved NIH will excel in the coming days. With these words, and uh, with a promise to bring you further uh, evidence-based cases in the upcoming CMEs, that is coming up on 14th, I presume, of uh, August, the uh, 13th of August, in August, second Sunday and fourth Sunday of every month. So stay tuned, stay uh, tuned with us. We are now uh, having live sessions, not only on YouTube, but also on Twitter and Facebook. So these uh, cases, these uh, recordings will be preserved over there. Your questions, your queries can be sorted out through the comments over there. With this, I'm returning. Uh, back to, I think, uh, also uh, Dr. Pralai Sharma is there. This is there. Please bring him on screen. If not, with your permission, Kalyani, sir, uh, I am returning uh, there is, uh, there is to no. our backstage editor, Orko Mukherjee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you and good night to all of you. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's CME. And if you have enjoyed, to do make sure to like, share, and subscribe on YouTube. Retweet on Twitter and share it with your alumnus and share it in your profile uh, on Facebook. So, with this, uh, it's time to say good night with our intro at the end. <laughs>